right before Christmas at 3.30 p.m. on December 23, 2015, electric grid operators noticed the cursor on their control screen move across the screen on its own. It clicked to order a breaker to open and then confirmed it. When the operator grabbed the mouse to try to correct it, it was unresponsive. The cursor then logged the operators out of the control system. When the operators tried to log back in, they weren't able to because their passwords had been changed. Then they noticed their computers weren't working at all. The operators helplessly watched hackers open breakers at 30 substations, essentially taking those substations offline. The hackers simultaneously hit two other power distribution companies, with different systems in a similar fashion, which just about doubled the amount of substations taken offline. Then, they disabled the backup power supply to two of the three distribution centers, which left the helpless operators themselves without electricity. When customers tried calling the customer service line to report the power outage, they had no luck because the customer service line was down. This was the 2015 cyber attack on the western Ukraine power grid, affecting the ivano frankivsk blast region. This was the first successful cyber attack to cause a power outage. According to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, about 225,000 people lost power. Eventually, grid operators were able to secure the system with manual controls. Six hours later, they restored power. Although months after the incident, the electric company had not regained full remote control. After the attack, the Ukrainian government launched an investigation with the help of the FBI and U.S. Department of Homeland Security. The investigation reports were later analyzed and expanded upon by private firms such as Booz Allen Hamilton. The investigation and analysis found some concerning implications about the security of the American power grid and the successful cyber intrusions into the American power grid. We'll cover both of those later in the video. According to the Booz Allen Hamilton analysis, these attacks were well-coordinated attacks that seemed to follow the typical kill chain. It involved breaching multiple electric companies with different control systems. All of this suggests the attacks were carried out by a well-funded nation-state. According to multiple threat intelligence reports, it is suspected that in May 2014 and in March 2015, the Russian state-sponsored hacker group Sandworm conducted phishing campaigns targeting grid operators to install a remote access trojan called Black Energy. They sent weaponized Microsoft files attached to emails from forged email addresses. The file included a malicious macro designed to install Black Energy. This gave them persistent remote access to the IT networks. Then, they installed Black Energy plugins that siphon off the operator's credentials. They used those credentials to move laterally to the control systems for the power grid. This was about a year before the power outage. Over the course of the year preceding the outage, they installed more plugins to perform reconnaissance. They maintained their persistent access and identified targets. Then they weaponized. They developed custom malicious firmware updates for the serial to Ethernet converters and chose other existing cyber weapons. Their attacks seemed to be intentionally timed right before Christmas. Before opening the breakers, they scheduled an outage of the uninterruptible power supply at the power grid control stations. After the attackers remotely opened the breakers, they then wiped the files on their systems with a malware called KillDisk, rendering the operator's computers useless. Some of the kill disk was triggered from remote command and control servers, and some was triggered with logic bombs. Then the hackers deployed the malicious firmware updates to the serial to Ethernet devices at the substations by leveraging a firmware overwrite vulnerability, which effectively killed those devices. Those serial to Ethernet devices process remote control commands, so the malicious firmware effectively disabled remote control. Once the firmware is overwritten, it cannot be undone, so those serial to Ethernet devices needed to be replaced. At the same time, the threat actors also coordinated a telephone denial of service attack on the customer service phone line using thousands of robocalls. Then again, in December 2016, the northern part of Kiev lost power after a power distribution station unexpectedly switched off. When the electric company's IT team investigated, they found data transmission that is not part of their standard protocols, which suggests a cyber attack. It is suspected that Russian threat actors again attacked the Ukrainian power grid. The investigation found that the Ukrainian power companies had segmented the IT and OT networks with a robust firewall. The major weakness was the lack of multi-factor authentication. <laughs> the cyber attack could have been much worse. Towards the end of the video, we'll discuss why hackers may have chosen to exercise restraint. Before we jump into that, let's first cover another likely threat actor, China. On October 12, 2020, the Indian city of Mumbai suffered a major power outage. 
Trains shut down, the stock market closed, and mobile telephone services collapsed after a grid failure that affected all of Mumbai. Roughly 20 million people were without power. In some parts of the city, the outage lasted for more than 12 hours. The New York Times was one of the first to publicly speculate that the outage could have been the result of a cyber attack. The next day during a press conference, a local Indian minister later acknowledged that the Mumbai police were investigating 14 Trojan horse programs in the city's power system and that the outage could have been the result of a cyber attack. The official position of the Indian government is that the outage was not caused by a cyber attack, but they did confirm to a &I that cyber attacks indeed happened. In 2020, after the start of the India-China border dispute, before the Mumbai outage, Recorded Future announced they had been observing a steep rise in the use of infrastructure known as Axiom Attica Symptote targeting India. The infrastructure encompasses the command and control servers for the modular Chinese backdoor malware called ShadowPad used by Red Eco. According to Recorded Future, the Chinese state-sponsored hacker group Red Eco targeted a large portion of India's power sector. They targeted at least 10 power sector organizations, one power plant, four of the five of the country's regional load dispatch centers, and other grid assets. The targeted regional load dispatch centers are responsible for balancing supply and demand, which is critical for grid stability. Cyber Peace Foundation, an Indian nonprofit that tracks hacking efforts, also documented a surge of malware directed toward India's power sector, ranging from petroleum refineries to a nuclear power plant. Starting around late 2021, Chinese threat actors switched gears. They began to concentrate their targeting to power grid assets closer to the disputed territory. According to Recorded Future, they observed likely network intrusions targeting at least seven Indian state load dispatch centers near Ladakh. State load dispatch centers are vital for carrying out grid control and dispatching electricity to the demand areas. They deployed the shadow pad backdoor and used compromised internet-facing DVR and IP cameras as proxies to forward their command and control communications, effectively hiding the command and control server's IP addresses from Indian defenses. They used the open-source tool Fast Reverse Proxy to configure the forwarding. While the Indian government has not released many details about the attacks, according to PTI, the Indian Minister of Power, R.K. Singh, acknowledged China launched three probing cyber attacks on the Indian power grid in December, January, and February 2022. He stated they were not successful. It seems like the Russian and Chinese governments are using cyber attacks on the power grid to gain leverage. They are sending a signal that they can cause problems if the respective governments act against the Russian or Chinese government interests. They are also pre-positioning. They seem to be probing the defense capabilities, performing reconnaissance, and preemptively positioning their backdoor access to enhance their attack capabilities. According to the Booz Allen Hamilton report, as well as a few other reports, the Ukrainian operators had implemented firewalls between their internal IT networks and the OT networks, similar to the American grid controls. The American grid uses similar serial to Ethernet devices. Only the American grid operators generally do not have the ability to revert to manual control. A similar attack could leave American grid operators without any control over some grid components until they install new serial to Ethernet devices. Ukrainian power grid controls have extensive logging capabilities throughout their networks, something the U.S. generally does not. According to the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security, Preparedness Division of Cybersecurity, variants of black energy malware that was used in the Ukraine attack have been identified on multiple critical energy infrastructure networks in the U.S. The U.S. Department of Energy requires electric grid operators, some power plants, and electric utility companies to report all attempted cyber attacks. They publish those metrics every year in the annual report of electric disturbance events. As you can see from this graph of reported incidents, the frequency of cyber attacks is generally growing. There are some exceptionally notable incidents reported. The North American Electric Reliability Corporation references a few of them in their Lessons Learned reports. According to the 2018 NERC Lesson Learned Risk of Internet Accessible Assets Report, asset accounting and inventory shortfalls resulted in an access point being misidentified as a remote terminal unit with an end-of-life operating system and left in place. The purpose of the access point was to remotely access and operate the capacitor banks that ensure the reliability of the system. Because it was identified as end-of-life, it was not patched or monitored. It was exploited with brute force and accessed by threat actors. Again, no multi-factor authentication. <laughs> the IP address and credentials for the access point were posted on a Russian dark web forum, and a device was subsequently infected with ransomware. 
The compromise was discovered after support staff could not establish remote access. Forensic analysis on the compromised system identified several different scanning tools designed to locate remotely accessible RDP and SMTP servers along with text files containing IP addresses for the scanners to target. The attackers likely conducted reconnaissance on the local network to identify other vulnerable devices and identify other remote systems to target for attacks. They did this for seven months before the compromise was discovered. <laughs> According to the 2019 NERC Lesson Learned Risks Posed by Firewall Firmware Vulnerabilities Report, a vulnerability in the web interface of a firewall was exploited, allowing an unauthenticated attacker to cause unexpected reboots of the devices. This resulted in a denial of service condition at a low impact control center and multiple remote low impact generation sites. The entity system monitoring tools also provided notification of the firewall reboots. These records show the firewall reboots occurred over a 10-hour time period with each firewall showing offline status for less than five minutes. The vulnerability was eventually patched. Due to the sensitive nature of the environment, the patches needed to be extensively tested and systems taken offline to install the patch. It is likely that threat actors were performing reconnaissance, probing their hacking capabilities and the operator's response. These two incidents are the only two with publicly released details, but certainly not the only notable attacks reported. Threat actors often time their attacks to cause maximum impact. During the 2021 Texas freeze, a cyber attack that causes interruptions of electrical system operations was reported by a Texas grid operator. During the height of the summer heat, in July 2021, a power plant or transmission line operator in Wisconsin reported a cybersecurity incident that resulted in the complete loss of monitoring or control capability at its staffed bulk electric system control center for 30 or more continuous minutes. Again on the Sunday before Thanksgiving in 2021, an operator in Wisconsin was targeted again, likely the same operator that was targeted earlier in the year. Politically motivated cyber attacks on critical infrastructure present a powerful political tool. It seems that the attack surface is only expanding and attacks are becoming more common. It's likely that the threat actor's immediate goal of the attacks is not to cause power outages in the US and other developed countries, but to test the potential for hacking the power grid and enhance their capabilities. It is a safe bet that after each attack, the threat actors are getting better at attacking the power grid and other critical infrastructure. It's important to note the U.S. alleged attack on Russian power plants in 2019. According to the New York Times, the United States injected malware into portions of Russia's grid. The speculated intent was both pushing back against Russia's own aggressive hacking of U.S. plants and as a potential future weapon should war break out. While attacks that cause outages seem to only have happened in developing countries, the U.S. and other developed countries are clearly not immune. Stay tuned for our next video that covers what the United States is doing to secure the power grid.